And so the scene is set for the first of these last two groups. We have five group winners already. We will get two more tonight. The first one from the Terrier group, the second one from the Hounds. Terriers coming up now. They will, of course, go through to the best in show later this evening. So we're now waiting for the arrival of our judge. He's sitting on the front row and he'll be escorted into the ring by uh, Gerald King, who's chairman of the Crufts Committee. And here he comes. Dan Eriksson from Sweden, been involved in the show world for over 40 years. Started off with Scottish Terriers and in fact bred 153 Scottish champions but he's had a wide range of uh, dogs that he has seen through to great success over the years. This is the Adel Terrier Maestro. And the Australian Terrier. This dog is called Frankie, 14 months old. The Bedlington Terrier. This is a bitch, 21 month old, global. And the Border Terry here. This is Grimley, a three and a half year old dog. And the Bull Terrier, Fred. He's 22 months old. And the miniature version. This is Costa. He's also a dog, 22 months old. The Cairn Terrier. The Cairn Terrier. This is Rocky, a young dog. And the Chesky Terrier. This is Cheese Dog, 21 months old. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Sally, this is a young bitch. The Smooth Fox Terrier. And Spanky is the Smooth Fox Terrier, a three year old dog. And the Wild Fox Terrier. And this is Travella Striking Steel, a four year old dog called Oliver, Wild Fox Terrier. The Glen of Imal Terrier, four-year-old dog called Billy. And now we see the Irish Terrier. And here's the Irish Terrier. This is Ricky, a two-and-a-half-year-old dog. And the next dog into the ring is the Kerry Blue. And the Kerry Blue Terrier, Riley, a two-and-a-half-year-old dog. The Lakeland Terrier, Rose, is a three and a half year old bitch. And we have the Manchester Terrier. And we now have the Norfolk Terrier. The Norfolk Terrier, this is Martha, two and a half year old bitch. And the Norwich Terrier. This is Zizi, an 18 month old dog. The Parson Russell Terrier, this is Tag, a 17 month old bitch. And the, that's the Scottish Terrier, I'm sorry. <laughs> And 
And the Celium Terrier, this is Askel, a three and a half year old dog. And the Sky Terrier, this is Russia, a 28 month old bitch. Soft coated Wheaton Terrier, Lola, a two year old bitch. And this is the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Bodie. Over 400 of these here today. Four year old dog. And this is the Welsh Terrier, Stanley, 15 month old dog. And the West Highland White Terrier here, Devon, is a 20 month old dog. Dan Erickson now taking a first look round the best of breed winners. Hugely experienced all over the world in judging terriers and, and all breeds, in fact. He's even owned and shown the best in show Pekingese. Absolutely loves Pekingese. <laughs> However, he's now taking in the outlines of these terriers to see their, if their proportions are correct, their outline is correct as required by the breed standard. The weaselly shape of the Dandy Dinmont there. And this, of course, Frank, you've great experience of going in there for the group judging, is one of the most important elements of judging the group to get that idea of what you've got in front yes, of you. If, if they're the right shape and proportions, it usually means that they've got good breed type. Rich variety, there's the smooth coated Manchester Terrier, then the cobby little Norfolk and Norwich, the Parson Russell there and the, oh, the Scotty it's a Wheaton it's as one of we don't see so many Wheaton Terriers winning best of breed in the Scotties I must say most of the Scotties I saw today were black the sturdy Welsh and this wonderful little um, West Highland white terrier there from a very good entry today And here's the Airedale Terrier, the king of the terriers, it's called, because it's the largest in the terrier group. It was developed in the area around Bingley and Ilkley, the Air Valley. And at one time it was known as the Waterside Terrier because it used to work along the riverbanks catching rats. Remarkable scenting powers. It's been used by the army and the forces as a pack dog. Wonderful tracker too. And this one actually came uh, to the show today from the Netherlands. Excellent family dogs, not aggressive by nature, very protective of the family. Quite a coat, that one as well, isn't it, Frank? A wire, harsh wire coat on top, tiptoes of expectation, always alert. And he beat 81 others here today, the Airedale Terrier. And on the table, we have the Australian Terrier. As I said, he was called uh, Frankie. He comes from Berwickshire, this one. The origins of the Australian are said to have been along similar lines to those of the Australian Silky Terrier, which, of course, is in the toy group. It developed in the 19th century by Australians using native British Terrier breeds. It's a very popular breed in the country from which he derives his name. It comes in two distinct colours, blue and tan, and all red. Yes, it's one of the longer, longer body terriers. Many of the terriers are short-backed and cobby. This one has a bit of length to it, clean in outline, a wedge-shaped head, powerful jaws. Very important for a terrier to do its job well. And not a particularly big entry. 17 of them here today. Next terrier breed we see is one of our British terrier breeds, the Bedlington terrier. 
The Bedlington Terrier now from Northumberland, the town of Bedlington, but at one time it was known as the Rothbury Terrier because that was the breed, the town where it was developed. Lots of these terriers were developed locally and then their fame spread and became known nationally. The Bedlington was also a good sporting dog. It could uh, hunt rabbits and chase rabbits. It's very speedy and powerful. It could bring ho home the supper. And Global here is 21-year-old uh, bitch, winning her third CC in Best of Breed today. Beat 89 other Bedlingtons. Very distinctive look with the the head and the way that the grooming and, is done of the and, the uh, top knot that they have there. Wonderful uh, dogs out in the field and uh, very good at going out with the ferrets. And that protective hair on the end edge of the ears was to said to protect them from rat bites. The dandy didn't. I beg your pardon, the Bedlington Terrier. This is the Border Terrier. This one comes from Yorkshire. Uh, known as the Reedwater or the Cockettdale Terrier after the locality of his early days. Present name adopted around about 1880 because he worked with the Border Foxhounds, but it was more than 40 years before the breed was actually recognised by the Kennel Club. The breed standard is very much to the point. Like all terriers, expected to go to ground after his prey. Essentially a working terrier, clean outline, a thick coat and skin, very protective for them, and a head like an otter. Strong in the jaw and the foreface, in wonderful condition. This is one of the top terriers of last year, already a group winner, coming from Thursk in North Yorkshire. Now, here's the unmistakable outline of the Bull Terrier. It's called the Bull Terrier because it's got some bulldog blood in it. And so that gives it the extra substance. And it was developed uh, to give it this egg-shaped head. Um, it was Captain James Hinks who first standardized the breed in the 1850, and it's become hugely popular. Strong, substantial, and uh, always alert. It's and a totally distinctive head shape there. It's called an egg-shaped head, isn't it? There, first shown in its present form in Birmingham here in 1862. And the Bull Terrier Club has been around since 1887. Most of, them, most of them tend to be white all over with occasional patches over the eye, but not this one. Now, the broad chest and substance great characters. This one a tricolour, a big winner recently at the much esteemed Bull Terrier Club show when it won some of the trophies. Often we see the Bull Terriers in white or white with badger markings. Here we've got a tricolour, a coloured Bull Terrier. No weight or height limits on the Bull Terrier. Beat 67 others to take the best of breed today. And this is the miniature version of the same breed. The miniature Bull Terrier here, and uh, the, uh, the top miniature Bull Terrier of 2015. This is 22-month-old Costa. And the standard is uh, the, the smaller examples of the Bull Terrier have been known since the early 19th century, but they were actually removed from the Kennel Club breed register in 1918 because the numbers grew so low. But it has been revived and has now been quite successful. There are 85 here taking part in competition today. One of the great challenges is to get good bull terrier type, with, but within the size compass. A maximum of 14 inches is desirable. They get, there is some leeway, but uh, the challenge is to get the substance within the size range. Hugely popular now. Great characters. Broad chest and clean movement. The miniature Bull Terrier. Terrier 
now on the table is the Cairn Terrier, first exhibited in 1909 and recognised three years later by the Kennel Club. One of the native Scottish breeds. All of the Scottish Terrier breeds share the same taproot blood sources, so they're all related 100 years ago. Then they were selectively chosen for size, for bone, for colour, and that's how the breeds were developed. Here the Cairn is one of the lighter ones, lighter boned, very active. They always carry this wonderfully cheerful expression in the face. Uh, delightful little dogs, I do like the Cairns. Absolutely. Slightly shaggy, sorry Frank. Absolutely free from exaggeration. They're not heavily boned, they're moderate body, but again this rough protective coat on top. Great characters. They should have a rugged look, not trimmed like many of the other terriers. <laughs> you couldn't call him trimmed. No, Tidied up and rustic he should be. Yes, I think he is. Small prick ears there, shaggy eyebrows. Well, this is the Chesky Terrier, the national dog of the Czech Republic. A gentle character for a, ter uh, for a terrier breed. Stands as tall as uh, 32 centimetres at the withers, slightly longer in the back than he is high. This one is called Chais. He's a dog, 21 months old, and he's come from the Czech Republic to take part. So he's representing his country as well as his breed here. Slightly arched head, brisk and vigorous movement, plenty of drive in the Chesky Terrier. And that very typical top line, a slight rise to the loin and a fall to the tail set. Unlike many of the other terrier breeds, he's not required to carry his tail above the level of the back. Now the wonderful shape of the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. He gets his name from a character in one of the Walter Scott novels, Guy Mannering. And in that book, there was a, ca a great character called Dandy Dinmont, who had two working terriers. They were called Pepper and Salt. And, uh, and that, that is um, how they are uh, called for colour now. The mustard, sorry, here on the table, and the pepper and salt is the grey one. Remarkable history, developed in the border regions for hunting, and only recently it was given its own tartan in, in Scotland. <laughs> it's got the Dandy Dinmont Tartan, which is a black and yellow, the only breed to carry a tartan. And this particular little girl is called Sally and comes from Aberdeen. Irresistible breed for character. How can you resist those dark, large eyes? Look at that special Weasley top line, a rise and a fall and a penciled coat which is protective. And credited with being uh, crossed with a smooth Dachshund to produce a wire-haired Dachshund. There were 66 of these uh, smooth fox terriers here at Crufts today. This one is called Spanky, he's a three-year-old dog. Uh, the fox terrier, of course, comes in two forms, smooth and wire, known throughout the world from his British origins and probably owes his existence to the same type of dog that produced both the bull terrier and the black and tan or Manchester terrier. The uniformity of type was established in the late 1800s and the original standard for the fox terrier drawn up in 1876. One of the smartest of the terrier breeds. Short back, this clean neck and shoulders, this high set tail gives them an air of quality. I am always surprised that they're not more popular because there's not a lot of work to them. Their grooming is minimum, keeping that dense, smooth coat. Wonderful characters. This one bred from a famous kennel in America and a big winner. There it is, the Smooth Fox Terrier. Now on the table is the cousin, the Wire Fox Terrier. And uh, the appearance of the Wire Fox Terrier was uh, 20 years later than the Smooth. And it's thought that it uh, was developed by using some of the rough-coated terriers developed by the Reverend Jack Russell in the West Country to give it this uh, different coat. 
He was responsible for a lot of uh, terrier work. He was a hunting parson and very keen on terriers. And this went into the blood and the making of the wire-haired fox terrier. This is actually a four-year-old dog. He's, uh, he's called Oliver and he's from the, can we call it, a, oh, it's a kennel from uh, Victor Malzoni in uh, Italy and Br this one comes from Brazil. And it's a bred in Bristol by Bill Brown Cole, a very famous breeder of wire fox terriers, second generation. This was dog of the year two years ago in the United Kingdom before going to Brazil. He was, holds the record for best in show wins in the history of dog showing. Wow. A great, very successful dog. Well, this is Billy. He beat 42 other Glenavimal Terriers to get here today. He's four years old. This is a breed which originates from uh, County Wicklow in Ireland. Been through some fairly hard times in recent years, although it's now making some of a comeback. The numbers are fairly low. The breed wasn't formally recognized until about 1930, but until the banning of badger trials in 1966, the Glen of Amal had to earn a certificate as a trial as well as winning in the show ring before he could be called a champion. Quite a task. He's one of the most substantial of the terrier breeds, heavily boned, those front legs slightly bowed, and they say that this helps him in digging, the uh, slightly bowed legs. Slight rise in the top line, and again, that thick, weatherproof outer coat. And very alert and a wagging tail from the uh, Glenivimal there. This one, the record holder in the breed. Now the distinctive racy outline of the Irish Terrier. It's once called the Irish Red, Red Terrier to distinguish it from the other Terriers of Ireland. It is one of the raciest, and again, it's a, a mixture of the Irish Terrier breeds, but it only comes in this color, this rich red color. Beautifully elegant, very game, always loyal and devoted to its owner, but uh, pretty assertive with other Terriers. Yes, Ricky is uh, two and a half years old, coming from Utoxeter in Staffordshire. As Frank was saying, uh, very interesting in temperament, a, a daredevil at heart, it says in the standard, reckless and sometimes foolhardy. And when I say a racy terrier, it's because it's built on generous flowing lines, a long neck, fairly long in the back, and a lovely stride. The reckless spirit of the Irish Terrier. Well, this is the lovely Kerry Blue Terrier, Riley, two and a half years old. The coat is really quite a feature of the breed. The puppies are born black. It can take up to 18 months for it to turn to this nice hue of blue. The coat itself, soft and silky. Re resembling astrakhan and it's a coat that doesn't shed an extrovert at heart it's a nice compact spirited dog determined and very adaptable it's very good that his name tells us a lot he's from county kerry and he's blue this one quite a dark shade of blue for two and a half years of age but look at the look at the energy and drive in that movement and this lovely short back high set tail and powerfully curved quarters yes there's a lot of power in the dog having a kerry blue on the end of the lead is like someone said having lightning in a bottle <laughs> so that's how spirited they are and striding out really well Now on the table is the Lakeland Terrier, a lovely little compact terrier. Again, it's one of those breeds that was developed locally. All of the, uh, the Dales in the Lake District had their own terrier. And then the, the breeders in the areas intermixed them, intermingled them, bred them selectively for what they wanted to do. Strong jaw, harsh coat, and there we had the generic name, the Lakeland Terrier.
Yes, three-and-a-half-year-old Rose here comes from Italy to take part in this competition. These uh, dogs are small enough to tuck up under your arm, but he's tough enough to spend the whole day running in the countryside. His, the breed is trimmed, the coat is trimmed, but apart from professional care twice a year, it's fairly easy coat to look after on a day-to-day -day basis. This run are red or Wheaton, they also come in grizzle, a sort of black and tan colour. They could hunt singly or in packs. They're, they're friendly and great workers. They're a wonderful little unexaggerated breed. This is another whose own indicator where he came from. Stephen Paul Andrews had 66 Manchesters to judge today. He sent us through another male, 17707. This is a sleek athletic breed which reached its. And just peeping round the corner there, we have the Manchester Terrier. A good-looking black and tan dog with the advantage of a very smooth coat. His name denotes his origin. It's likely there's a little bit of whippet in his ancestry. They're elegant and graceful. These were bred as ratters and still be, can be relied on to dispatch vermin quickly and efficiently. were very popular in the Industrial Revolution and were developed in Manchester in the mills to keep down the rats. They're smooth-coated. It's thought there's some whippet in their ancestry that gives them that curve over the loin. They're rich black and tan markings. And there we see on the, the thumbprints on the tan. It, this is a breed feature, a little black thumbprint on the tan on the front legs. The thumb mark of the Manchester. Now, the compactness of the Norfolk Terrier. The Norfolk Terrier and the Norwich, which we'll see later, take their names from the county and the city. They were developed from using the Glen Vimal, Red Cairn Terriers and Dandy Dinmonts. And we've got, they were chosen for being compact, low to ground, very substantial. Again, like all of the others, they were developed locally and then now they have national fame and they've become extremely popular. Yes, Martha here is just two and a half years old. Typical short legged terrier. Developed to, for catching small vermin. But all the terriers are designed to go to ground, and this one certainly can. Short back, big ribs, a lot of substance in a small frame, and a lot of spirit in that small dog. They don't know they're the smallest terrier. <laughs> they don't. And you see those ears dropping forward at the tip. And it's uh, quite reasonable, I should have mentioned the ears first, because there we have the Norwich Terrier now, and these ears, as you can see, are pricked. This is Zizi, an 18-month-old dog. The Norwich Terriers were accepted on the Kennel Club Breed Register in 1932, when they were known as the drop-eared Norwich Terrier, but that's now the Norfolk. Oh, well, it could get too complicated to tell you about, but for one time they were shown together as one breed, the Norwich Terrier, until they were split in 1964. And again, this is the black and tan coloration. They also come in red and grizzle. That's the main difference, is the, the prick ears. Um, they have, although they are terriers, they are not quarrelsome breed. They have to be outgoing and friendly with other terriers. Used to work as little packs. Again, beautifully compact and short, low to ground. One of the challenges is getting a low to ground, short legged dog with freedom of action. And we see that here, this wide chest and good stride. Now, here we have the Parson Russell Terrier on the table. This was developed in the, in the West Country, and it's thought it has shares the roots with the Fox Terriers. As I mentioned, the Parson Reverend John Russell was very keen hunting Parson, and these were one of the Terriers he developed. They were bred to go with the packs of Foxhounds, often being carried in the pannier basket. And Tag here is just a 17-month-old uh, bitch. 
France is not really suited to uh, a town life unless there's a, a fair amount of freedom for, of, of space for exercise. And too intelligent to be left on his own for great long periods, they easily get bored. We see the difference with the Fox Terriers by being slightly longer in the back, a broader skull and shorter foreface. They can come in the wire-coated, smooth-coated or broken coats. Well, this is the Scottish Terrier. Normally we see them in black, but this is a Wheaton colour and is a dog and has come from the USA to take part here today. Very popular short-led dog from the Highlands, sturdy, low-slung. It's often said that uh, they have the appearance of a doer Scot, but I don't believe that at all. I think they, they are most attractive. They're very affectionate and cheerful, quite happy to curl up in the favourite armchair and uh, you'd be hard-pressed, I think, to remove him. Dark eyes glint with protectiveness as he prepares to guard his home. Again, a lot of substance in a small frame, strongly boned straight legs, this long, clean head with powerful jaws. A terrier needs those to do its job. A level, top line, high set tail, and uh, as we say, Dan Erickson, our judge, has bred over 150 champions of these. His Raglan Kennel from Sweden is well known worldwide for producing great Scottish Terriers. Again, they're a stubborn breed, and to get them moving as freely as this, if you own a Scotty at home, you'll know this is going well. <laughs> the now, one of my favorite Terrier breeds, the Celium Terrier. One of the Welsh native breeds. About uh, 150 years ago, it was developed at Celium Manor, which is in Pembrokeshire in South Wales, by Captain John Owen Tucker Edwards, who lived there. And it's thought that in the development of it, there was a bit of corgi, perhaps, some dandy dinmont, West Highland, perhaps. Um, but we've got a, a, a terrier developed from those breeds to do a job of work. They're more... Um, rectangular in shape than some of the other terriers. And this one's come to Birmingham from Berlin in Germany. It's a three and a half year old dog called Axel. And though the origins of the Celium are, are, are rural Welsh, as Frank was saying, they, they are just as much at home in the town as in the country. And uh, striding at one of the top dogs in Germany last year, this dog. And there we have the head of the Sky Terrier. This is Russia, a 28-month-old bitch. Comes from Bratislava in Slovakia. It's one of the oldest of the Scottish breeds. The Sky Terrier makes a good watchdog and house, and house dog. Courageous, but not aggressive. And his long coat really makes him a very glamorous dog, but it'll require a lot of weekly brushing and occasional bathing to keep him in good condition. But the coat rarely sheds. I'm saying him, it's a bitch, of course, this one. Now, this has to be the longest of the terrier breeds. We can only see half of him there. But uh, <laughs> when he moves, he should retain that long, level top line. They used to be called yard dogs because it was reputed that they measured 36 inches from nose to tail. And here comes the rest of him, striding out. This is a prick-eared variety, these um, shaded tips to his ears. They also come in a drop-eared variety. Of course, if you know the legend of Greyfriars Bobby, this uh, Sky Terrier who, when his owner died, he uh, stayed at his graveside and was fed by locals. There's a monument to him in Greyfriars Church in Scotland, in Edinburgh. A lot of grooming in there to keep it looking like this. And here's the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, another of the Irish native breeds. And he gets his name, his name tells us a lot. He's soft-coated and he's Wheaton. That means any shade of ripening wheat, as the standard says, so he can be gold to cream in all its shades. Again, he shares his, uh, we might see some Kerry Blue influence in his background and some other sporting terriers. However, he's uh, not as compact as some of the others. 
rectangular in shape. Yes, Lola is a two-year-old bitch who beats a hundred others soft-coated Wheatons that we're here at Crufts today. Jaunty approach to life, you can see it in the way he moves there. Sturdy dog, hardy, unexaggerated in any way. Make and, a good house pet. And they should have a silky coat, and they shouldn't be over-trimmed. They should be looking again a little bit rustic. Well, numerically, the largest entry in the Terrier group, over 410 of them were here today. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, this is a four-year-old dog called Bodie, comes from County Durham. One of the most popular of all the Terriers. Very kind to the human race in particular, a genuine love of children. It's really well known that they are extremely good dogs with children. Yes, he combines the bull breeds and the terrier, and he's got a lot of extra substance, a strong skull, powerful muzzle, and this one, a pied, which means it's a white with a colour. Here we go, a red and white, and uh, looking devotedly to his owner, striding out, and just uh, standing there to show off his broad chest. shown typically as all the Staffordshires are in this collar with the brass ornamentation which contains this Staffordshire knot, an emblem for the breed and for the county from which it came. Now here is the Welsh Terrier, a truly <laughs> working terrier background from this. Um, the Welsh was developed by a variety of other breeds. It's thought that the Welsh and the Lakeland Terrier are related, and it's thought that uh, people emigrated from uh, the Lake District and went to, to Wales and brought their Terriers with them and developed the two breeds together. This is short-backed and cobby, a rather heavier version of the Fox Terrier. Yes, and like the... Uh Fox Terrier, a tight, wiry coat, a neat, workmanlike dog, black and tan, the colour as you can see there. And the, um, you see the level top line and compact body shape and this high set tail. They, when they were working terriers, if they went to ground, they were often dragged out of the holes by taking a strong grip of the tail. So there it is, the Welsh Terrier, 15-month-old Stanley. White. Very recognisable, the West Highland White Terrier. This is Devon, this is a bitch, 20 months old, one of the most popular of the terrier breeds, a cheerful, outgoing personality, an ideal companion for youngsters. He's full of fun, virtually tireless, always ready for a walk, comes snow or shine, and small enough to pick up and take anywhere. Really the right size for a house or flat. He's really an all-purpose pet. And he was developed from the same Scottish breeds, but there was one family which were kept only selectively white terriers. And again, we talked about selective choice to get what they wanted in a breed. So that's how we got the white, West Highland white. It tells you where he came from. This has really taken my eye. I saw it win the, the best of breed today, looking magnificent as it does here. Beautiful, beautiful bitch with that short back, wonderful level top line, tail like a little carrot, and this wonderful broad skull and furnishings and neat little ears. I love this. This has taken my eye in this group. And this is important that they show well in the ring. Well, that's been a very nice collection to enjoy. This is looking at picture tonight and going very well. Now, who will Dan Erickson choose for his shortlist in this terrier group? This is where he takes them in and will pick out eight to ten of the dogs he likes most. And tremendous applause there for... Just reminding himself of what he's found on his hands-on examination. We've viewed them on the ringside. He's gone over the anatomy and felt the body and the construction. And their coat texture, very important.
Well, as you say, Frank, he's going to pick eight or ten, perhaps. Where is he going? He's coming over to the In ball comes terrier. The, the border the terrier comes out first. And then I think we're uh, going down to the wire fox terrier, the previous best in show winner. And the Irish terrier is brought out, the Kerry Blue. The Norfolk, the little Norfolk comes in. And the Norwich. The Celium Terrier from Germany. And the little Westy bitch. How oh, I love this bitch. So wonderful and looking a picture. Now. Well, lovely collection. The Norfolk and Norwich both making it there as well. As the others that haven't been selected leave the arena. And uh, the judge sending them back, I think, and we'll see them moving out and back before he makes his final decision. So a short list of eight. And here's the famous border terrier, Brackenfell back to bark. He comes from Thursk in Yorkshire, won a huge entry today, best of breed from over 200 of them. Beautifully clean outline, excellent coat and tail, so important, and that badger type head. Striding out. Standard says they should be capable of following a horse, and a beautiful, clean, flowing outline there. So, a multiple group winner already. Now he's the wire fox terrier, Travella striking steel. He's the record holder for best in show wins in the history of dog showing in this country. Now living in Brazil with Victor Malzoni, but bred by Bill Brown Cole in Bristol. Again, moving freely. This long punishing head. Crisp wire coat and holding his top line with his high set tail. Now the Irish, Irish Terrier, terrier yes. racy, clean lined, this red color, harsh textured, Lake Ridge Cajal from a famous kennel. The tiptoes of expectation, always looking for trouble and fun and enjoying the occasion here. The judge taking in their outline on the move. Do they hold their top lines? Are they well balanced? Now, the powerful drive of the Kerry Blue. Irish Blue, Jack of Diamonds. He lives in Ireland. He's an Irish champion. Come over today and won best of breed at Crufts. They're full of spirit, and that's why they love showing. They're really motoring round the ring. This silky textured blue coat. This is a dark blue. And now the cobby body of the little Norfolk, looking round at the crowd. They don't know they're the smallest breed in the Terrier group. Beautifully short body, compact and cobby. Short leg, but still retaining freedom of movement. The little Norfolk. from a famous kennel, kin the Kinridge Kennel from uh, Staffordshire. And now the Norwich, the prick-eared Norwich, very similar, they were shown together with the Norfolks until 1964. The prick-ears are the main thing which separates them, they're still cobby, low to ground. This one, Regus hand in glove, became a champion just after he finished his puppyhood. So he's a top, top one in the breed for last year. He's won a black and tan, and from the most famous kennel in the breed, the Ragus kennel. Now the Celium from Germany, all about Axel of Chesky's dreams. One of the top dogs all breeds in Germany last year. 
went to the uh, Yukonuba final, one of the prestigious European uh, finals. Rectangular in build, long and powerful in the head and jaw, which is the equipment a Terrier needs for its job. Uh, just looking a little soft in his top line there, but very free, low stride. And here's this little Westie. Bernie's Geordie girl. She lives up in Durham, which was where she gets her name from. Beautifully short-backed, clean neck and shoulder, the tail bang on like a little wire-coated carrot, as I call it. But I love this bitch. She's a great favourite of mine. But uh, only, you know, not yet two years of age. She became a champion at 13 months. Modesty forbids who made her a champion, but uh, that's why I love her so much. An absolute masterclass from Frank, Frank there on these wonderful eight dogs, which are now contesting. The boards are coming out, so our judge, Dan Erickson, will have made up his mind. He's made a lovely selection there, and as Frank described them, all these dogs have an amazing pedigree. They've all done extremely well in the past, and interestingly, Frank knows absolutely Everything about them, and he's walking straight to Would you guess? Oh, fantastic! You got it right again, fantastic. Frank. The little West Highland boy. That's little wonderful. Little Devon, 20 months old. That's marvellous. I saw her win the breed. Very good judging today. Lovely, lovely quality in the breed. And there she is. It's her first group win, and at Crufts, what a place to do it. She's a beautiful specimen of the breed. And there, and the border. The other dog from the north. It's the border terrier. Buckenfell back to Bark, uh, living in Thirsk, North Yorkshire, <laughs> quite close to me. And in great condition, Ronnie Irving, uh, a breed expert. Terry Blue takes yes, the three. Yes, yes. <laughs> there we are. Showed beautifully, powerful quarters and great energy. Then the little Norfolk bitch. She's a group winner and put on a good show tonight. But there is the winner, this gorgeous little West Highland white terrier called Devon, 20 months old. Oh, how wonderful is that? Vice President of the FCI to present the trophy to the winner of the Terrier Group from 2016, the West Highland White. Judge Dan Erickson will present the rosettes to the group two, the Border Terrier. And to group three, the Kerry Blue Terrier. And group four, the Norfolk Terrier. This is a chance for Marina Scott to go interview our winner of the toy group, one of the uh, Terrier group, Crufts 216. <laughs> many, many congratulations. How wonderful for a British breed to top the Terrier group at Crafts. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have done a lot of winning with a lot of dogs for some time, but yeah. how does this feel? Oh, it's amazing. It's the first time I've been in the group at Crufts, um, so to come in and win it, <laughs> just can't believe it. Yeah, nerve-wracking, but exciting at the same time. <laughs> Sounds like the audience approves anyway. Many congratulations. You won't have much time to get ready for later, but any final little grooming tips? Yeah, well, to just check her over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way. Well, many congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your Terrier Group winner, the West Highland White Terrier. So that beautiful West Highland White, which Frank said he had his eye on, it shows what a tremendous judge Frank is, that he picks them every time. I've sat next to him for many, many years in this Coventry position, and more often than not, he's spot on. Tremendous. So little Devon in the final. You'll see her later in Best in Show, later this evening. And a very worthy winner of the Terrier Group at Gruff 2016.